What up, Black and Blue fan? Welcome to the Black and Blue Review, where we break down the good, the bad, and the ugly of police interaction videos to give you a better understanding of what cops do or what they should be doing out there on the streets. My name is Dale, and I'm an actual police officer out here in California with over 25 years' experience in the business. I'm joined today, like I am on every Black and Blue Review, by a non-law enforcement member of the community to help us break down today's video. So, uh, Black and Blue fam, help me welcome to the review, my girl, Sydney. How you doing, fam? Doing well. Thanks for having me on. Absolutely, absolutely. What you up to today on this Sunday? Oh, we just got back. We, we walked the dogs. Uh, went to kind of a cool food hall downtown Cincinnati. I'm here in the Queen City and. Uh, had a nice, relaxing little Sunday. That's what's up. That's what's up. Dog walk. What kind of dog you got? Oh, I have two big Burmese mountain dogs. One is Ooh. 150 pounds, and the other I... hovers just about 100 pounds. So, so big boys. Uh oh. Uh oh. Cool. Well, <laughs> glad you glad you could make it today, and you know they won't be jumping out to the screen. Well, it's cool if they do. It's cool if they do. But <laughs> what? <laughs> whatever. Hey, so I got down there that you are a corporate account manager and uh, today's video we're going to talk about because I'm sure that you've had them just like uh, the rest of us the issues on your job right uh, we, we, we've all had issues on our job with our co-workers in today's video show you right there is a uh, police chief and a sergeant get into an altercation this comes to us from Brad, uh, Bradley Beach New Jersey so I'm going to show you a video and just give me your thoughts through it so uh, here we go let's check this out yeah. thanks I can't get any. Can you tell me your first <laughs> name at least? Cool. Why well, you got a, a jacket on that, that stuff fit to be worn? What's on the back of it? What do you mean? Look at the tell me what's on the back of it. Oh, it washed off. Yeah, then get rid of it. Okay. That's ridiculous. Okay. You're a sergeant for that. Okay, Chief. Let me work this DWI, okay? Chief, I'm on a DWI. Over here. Chief, I'm on a DWI. Get over here. I'm on a DWI. Chief, I'm working. Get, get I don't have time to argue here. about a jacket, get okay? Don't you, don't you touch me. Don't you touch me. Don't you fucking touch me. You have a problem? Fuck. Why you grab me. What? Now get out of here. Before you get a problem. Take him in. No, me. you're gonna go in. Walk again. So, so let me let me pause it right there. What, what what do you think? What are your thoughts on this so far? So my initial thoughts, and I'm trying I'm trying to remove bias that I may have, but I was just raised in a culture of deference. Um, if someone in authority asked me to step to the side for a second, and you know we don't know how long the conversation would have been if he would have just maybe stepped to his superior the superior wanted to just discuss the jacket or discuss something else for a moment it wasn't clear fully what he was going to discuss i think he could have taken a couple seconds heard what he said if he felt um that the conversation could have been tabled for another time then he could just say that and then i think make the decision to say hey i'm going to continue with my job and my duties i think him not initially just you know, giving the giving his superior a few more moments to kind of disclose whatever he whatever it was he wanted to disclose shows that there may have been um, some previous context to their relationship that's yeah. that has now over yeah. you know kind of overspilling into this yeah. altercation. Yeah. yeah. All right. Let, let's continue, and then uh, we can get into the, the hows and whys and all that in a little bit. So let's uh, let's continue. You're gonna go in. Thank you. Drunk again. Whose keys are these? They're mine. Get out of here. No. Chief, get out of here or you're going to get locked up. No, you Chief, you're going to get locked up. You're grabbing me. I asked you three times come to leave me alone. Here. You're come obstructing my DWI. Billy, come over here. Uh, let him go. That's the first thing. Put, put, don't I'm, I'm trying to get shut away up, from everybody. Shut up, because you're in trouble now. Stop. No, I'm Please, not in stop. trouble. Stop, stop, stop. stop. You're going to be in trouble. Stop, stop, Billy. Billy. 
Chief, I'm working at DWI. I'm listening to you. Okay. Shut up. No. You're in trouble because this is the first thing. First, first of all, I was about to say to you, you stupid. I was about to say to you, what do you need OEM for? You're, that's, you're embarrassing me in front of the men no, about the jacket. No, 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 no. That's, that's me. So, so let me ask you, do you, you have any sense of the chief's demeanor and why this may have escalated a little bit? I'm not sure. I, I mean, I can read that the chief is much more calm in his demeanor. And to me, that, that could possibly allude to, you know, he's had experience with maybe other officers that are a, a little bit, a, a, you know, anxious or very yeah. concerned, as he said in the video about how his peers are perceiving him as being, you know, the authority on the scene until the chief arrived. And that might be something um, that, you know, he, he needs to work through. Yeah. Um, yeah. But the chief's demeanor seems calm. Yeah. Well, <laughs> I, I can run this back, but uh, to me, um, and this is probably why this escalated and why the sergeant is telling him to get out of here or he's going to jail, the chief's yeah. hammered. Oh, see, I, I <laughs> again, I didn't, I yeah. didn't pick that up. Yeah, the, the, you can tell oh. by his slurred speech and, you know, when he's talking to him, it's kind of slow and slurred and chief's hammered. Oh, I thought that he's just kind of cool, calm, and collected. You see why it's so important for, you know, just yeah. civilians or regular people to chat with, you know, someone like you yeah. that can pick that up quickly. I thought yeah. he was just an experienced, calm person. Yeah, let, let, let's continue. Neither okay. here nor there. Okay. That, that's neither here nor there. Now we got a real fucking problem, Billy. Yeah, we do. I know. We I do. Know. All right, you're going to have to go inside. No, how about we do no, this? No, 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 no. How about no, we go Billy, inside? Billy, you're going to have to go inside right now with me. You're going to have to go inside and... and we're in a serious be... collision. Billy, you're not doing anything when I'm on the scene, okay? You should know better than this, my friend. No. Listen you to me. Grab me. No, I said you come over line. here. You're out of line. You grab me. Some Billy, video. Billy. Some video. I'm not going to argue with it. I have a crash Billy, to work. Billy. I have a job Billy, to do. Billy, you're okay? relieved. Billy, you're relieved. Okay. You're relieved. No, 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 Billy. You have to understand something. You're relieved, Billy. You're relieved. Go in the headquarters and wait for me. Okay, so, wait for me. In Sergeant there. is. Uh, That's an order. Sergeant is taking his uh, his Can orders. You put your car where my car is, so we're officers and first aid. Don't get run over, yes, please. I got you. I got Thank you. you. And, and he's leaving the chief saying he's suspended. So sergeant's wow. leaving now. See what happened there? Yes, chief. What did what happened? There's some type of exchange between you and Sergeant Major. Now how how uncomfortable <laughs> Are those other officers, those other, other co-workers being put in the middle of this? You know, the boss wow. is saying, hey, what did you see? And he's like, uh, you and the other guy having an altercation? Yeah, yeah. How uncomfortable for those guys, right? Yes. And do, do you think they all knew the, the state of the chief? Probably. But, you know, I mean, this is situations that we all get put in and work. Maybe not to that extent where your boss is is inebriated but you know when your boss comes and flying off the handle you know they're whatever they're they've got going on in their lives and and they're going a little off kilter and we all get caught in the middle and you you don't want to say anything you don't want to be caught in the middle that's what these guys are involved in right now so it's kind of you know they're caught in a rock between a rock and a hard place right exactly that has yeah. to be super difficult when someone with you know power authority over you yes. you know they make the final call but you know something's not right yep yep what ended up with this was the chief was the one who was suspended and the sergeant mm -hmm. went back to work so that can kind of tell you what was going on there yeah the, the, the chief had some little little something going on when he showed up on the scene there yeah again that's just it's it's so interesting how just seeing it from uh you know just just face on perspective you don't really know the full context of what's going on 
because to probably a, a passerby or someone standing even watching the scene across the street, it would have seemed like the the sergeant was just kind of unruly or you know a little arrogant. Um, but knowing the full context, it it changes the whole story. Yeah, yeah. I mean, <laughs> even if the chief you know was inebriated, I think you know the chief uh, the sergeant got a little little out of hand there. You know, slamming the chief on the <laughs> on the car. I mean, that was a little That's much. A lot. That was a little much. Yeah. Yeah. If I would have seen that, I'd have been like, Whoa, what's going on here? You know? So yeah. yeah, that was a little much, but for some reason, the the Sergeant was allowed to go back to work after all this review and the chief was the one who got suspended. So yeah. Wow. I wonder was the, the DWI, <laughs> did he uh, expect yeah. that? <laughs> expect all right. that to and, go down yeah maybe he knew the person that's why the chief showed up maybe they were out drinking uh -huh. together i don't know the whole <laughs> i don't know the whole situation they were all drinking together and then yeah that's what happens and you know his yeah. buddy got pulled over and he said oh let me let me take these cops off the scene here and then he right. you know, like you said maybe something was going on with uh him and that sergeant before because he was talking to him about his jacket you know and kept going yeah. in on him about his jacket you know yeah I, I, I didn't see anything. I couldn't see the jack. I don't know what, and look, maybe did it say public enemy on it or what? <laughs> oh yeah. Maybe that yeah. was. The case. <laughs> I don't know. I don't know. You ever had any uncomfortable situations at work? I'm, I'm sure we all have had those in our, in our work histories, right? Definitely. I think this is definitely relatable. Um, I think a lot of people have had those situations. Maybe it doesn't apply exactly here, but um, a lot of managers may have upper leadership that either it's been such a long time or they never had to do their specific role, but you still have to listen to, report into, and take instruction and feedback from those people in the place of authority, knowing very well they haven't done your job or these specific actions in years. Now, I don't know if that's the case with the with the, um, the sergeant and the chief here, but I think most people can relate to that. They have a boss that absolutely could not do the things that you're doing, but still have a very authoritative opinion on your day-to-day -day work. So that's a, that's a hard place to be. Yeah. And, and situations like this are, are relevant more in my line of work nowadays, because ever since George Floyd, now at least here in California and in other states, there's something called a duty to intercede because, you know, the other cops that sat there and watched as the officer was sitting mm -hmm. on, uh, on Floyd's neck and didn't do anything, even though the people in the background were like, Hey, stop him, get him off his neck and all that sort of stuff. So now there's laws specifically here in California, uh, a duty to, to intercede. And, you know, it's, it's kind of tough. I'm sure if you got a senior officer that's doing something and you're a junior officer, and in this case, it was the chief and, you know, you're the, you're the sergeant, uh, you know, and they're the ones doing wrong and you got to intercede. So uh, easier said than done, but that's that's what we're all supposed to do. And uh, the consequences afterwards, you, you just got to deal with it. Right. Yeah. Wow. Yeah. Yeah. So uh, if your boss is drinking on duty or at work, wherever, you know, wherever you work, <laughs> you, you, you probably need to say something. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> to intercede. That's probably, the lesson. Gotta, probably got to intercede. That, yeah. That's that's the that's the word of the day. The moral of the day. You got to intercede if your if your boss is getting a little off the handle, coming to work drunk or high, right? Absolutely. Yeah. And he wasn't even working. I guess he was off. It was night, right? So yeah, chief, just stay home. <laughs> just, <laughs> just stay home. Let let us handle. <laughs> All right, Cindy. Hey, I appreciate you coming on and, and dealing with this uncomfortable situation between these officers. And, uh, you know, we all learned and, you know, don't don't uh, act that way in your own line of work. And uh, we should all get along just just swimmingly. Right. This was just fine. <laughs> just fine. Cool. All right. Well, take care of those those big dogs that you got over there. And I appreciate you. Absolutely. Thank you so much for having me on. Yeah, you got it. Till next time. I appreciate you. Thank you. Thank you.